How's it going guys? So Steam actually did it, Valve did it, they added pair game profiles to the deck. So I'm going to look at these today and basically just jump around a few examples of why that might be useful for you guys when playing. To give you an example, I was playing Nino Kuni 2 earlier and that requires 50 hertz refresh rate and 10, D 10 watt TDP and then I jumped straight from that over to Celeste and that with it being an indie game and a 2D game requires much less TDP and you can run that at 60 watts. So basically, I just switched straight over to Celeste and it changed my settings to 5 watt TDP, not even that, and then it changed my refresh rate back up to 60. I didn't have to go into the settings and I didn't have to change anything. It's great for just swapping around in games now. You don't have to be in the menu all the time. You can just swap into that game and if once you've set the profile already, it's good to go. So yeah, we'll jump into it and I'll show you some examples. Welcome back guys. So basically all we want to do is pretty simple. Just go to settings. This is assuming you haven't done the update yet. Just literally check for updates and it should come up there. It, it came as a surprise to me this morning because um, they never they never tweeted about it. And I have their tweets like for favorited on my Twitter. So I can see that when they've got a new update out and what it is and stuff. But I just randomly checked Reddit and someone had posted the patch notes on Reddit. So I was like, holy shit, this is a, this is a huge update for people. Who just want to make their life easier when playing the deck and who prefer to jump between different games so yeah without further ado let's uh let's just give it a go so dishonored really easy game to run works perfectly on the deck i finished it around two days ago now it's probably like my sixth play through the game i keep meaning to play pacifist but i always end up killing someone it's just too fun and the blink ability must be one of my favorite abilities in in gaming history it's just so easy to get around. It's such a good traversal mechanic. But yeah, as far as the uh, performance settings goes, you'll have a new settings uh, area now, and it'll say performance settings. So if you turn this originally in, in a game that you haven't used before, the system will, it'll be default. So you'll be on default settings. I, as you could see before, had it set to Dishonored's profile, and as soon as I've changed it back to Dishonored's profile, it's remembered that Dishonored had a profile set before. And my profile for Dishonored is basically 60 locked um, and 7 watt TDP. So, I mean, like, <laughs> there's not much to Dishonored. It's very easy again to run. So I guess as an example of why you'd want to change more settings is if you had control. We used FSR for control last time when I was showing off F FSR. And... Basically, you'd set control up with FSR enabled, and then it would automatically use your FSR straight away as well. So, as you can see, I don't really need to do much gameplay for this. And this is like literally kind of near the end of the game. So, let me just, as you can see, runs a lot of 60. No, really, don't really need to explain that. We quit the game, and let's say oh, I'm bored of Dishonored now, let's jump over to Nino Kuni. Nino Kuni 2. Really do like the combat in this. It's very hack and slashy. It's pretty fun. I was getting a bit annoyed with the combat in the first game. It was a bit. I was getting my ass whooped basically. So, as you can see, it does like the kind of refresh rate flash because it's changed refresh rates. And if we go into settings now, you can see refresh rate is now gone down to 50 and my wattage is down at 8. To be fair, this game could do with a little bit of higher wattage, so I'm just going to change that to 10. Some of the over, some of the outer game world stuff, overworld stuff looks pretty, is pretty graphically intensive. So, other than that, the game does actually run really well uh, in caves and like in the third person mode. So, yeah, I mean, I can give you a, a couple of uh, gameplay examples for this as you can see it's running at 50 Evan. but yeah having the performance settings thing now is such a game changer because once you set your settings you can just leave them and not have to worry about them anymore Chris you know me in every video I do I have to switch the settings every time I change game and it can get quite annoying, so now Valve have actually implemented it. It's actually crazy that Valve are implementing all these changes so quickly because Nintendo have like 
When when the hell did Nintendo last put out a decent update on the on the Switch? Exactly. I can't even remember myself. Like they're all like minor changes. Imagine an actual company listening to their fan base. I mean, come on. Anyway, guys, I don't want to ruin too much of the story for this, so we'll jump into something that hasn't been changed, but we can change it. Because I've had these 3DS games linked to my actual Steam profile instead of going into the MU Deck launcher, we can change these. So if I open Pokemon X, because it's an actual like game, Steam classes are added as it's its own game, so we can technically go into settings and use a game profile for that. So, as you can see, using profile, if we change this to 60, and I remember it didn't require a lot of wattage, but I'm pretty sure this will work. So if we just go into game, I just pressed A by accident because it said I forgot it was a 3DS. Right, so we're in game. It doesn't actually say Pokemon here, it just says using profile. So this will be interesting. This is kind of like a test to see if it'll work on ROMs. So if we quit this now. Ah yeah, I forgot, Citra don't like quitting like that. Right, so if we exit the game, go back, and let's just open something which is quick and easy to open, which is, so Fallout New Vegas. New Vegas has the wattage, I believe, set to like seven. Let's have a look. This one is pretty simple because it opens up the, the the menu beforehand. So using New Vegas profile, 60 and the wattage is set at 7. So if we set the wattage down to like, if we set it to 9 for the sake of it, or 8 even, exit the game. When we load up Pokemon, it should have changed back to what we just set Pokemon at. So this will be a good test for uh, if it works on ROMs. And as you can see, it works on ROMs. It set our wattage back to seven and kept the profile. So awesome. Probably do for a last example, we'll jump into a game with FSR enabled and then we can just see if it keeps the FSR profile. So as you can see, we've got Spire running and we've got the FSR enabled. So FSR is enabled there. We're running at like, I don't know if it was like 540p resolution, but yeah, 540p. And it looks decent. I mean, FSR is pretty good in the right game. So for example, we've got this running at I mean, FSR sharpness isn't even set up here. So if we do free FSR sharpness, maybe bump that up to eight. Game looks really good, to be fair. Um, it's not a lock 60, which is a little bit annoying. We kind of might want to lock the refresh rate down to 50. Spyro, weirdly, is a hard game to run. I mean, I'm running this at like high to medium settings. So locked 50, I mean, looks pretty solid to me. Anyway, so this is what we're going to save. So this is pretty in-depth settings, right? And you wouldn't want to have to do this every time you loaded Spyro. So profiles enabled. We shall quit Spyro. Let's open up Dishonored just because it's wildly different settings. So you'll open up Dishonored. And once you see the screen flash, you'll know the refresh rate has changed back to 60. Okay, so it barely even flashes. It does it before the, the the watermark comes up or or the game even starts. And it says using Dishonored profile, we've got a refresh rate of 60. FSR is weirdly still turned on. So that's uh, something to note. It doesn't actually turn FSR off. But if you've got the resolution set to 800p anyway, FSR is not going to work. So it doesn't really matter what the hell FSR is set out unless, you're, FS, unless your resolution is lower. The main thing is, does it turn FSR back on? Inspira. Let's find out. So you're launching Spyro back up and you're expecting FSR to be running because it's got 540p resolution enabled. Does it re-enable FSR 
or do we have to just have FSR enabled it all the time? And to be fair, that's not a massive deal. If you're running, like I say, if you're running games at 800p, FSR is not going to be enabled anyway. So, for the sake of just having FSR enabled whenever you run a 540p game, it's worth just having it turned on anyway. But I'm just doing some little tests here, seeing if it runs. As you can see, flashed. So refresh rate has gone back down to 50. FSR did not come back on, so that's an interesting one to know. You're going to have to enable FSR if you want it to be on in, in these games. You just want to have it kept on, I guess. Weird how it can't like, switch between different games, but like I say, unless you're running a game at 800, uh, 540p or below 800p anywhere, it's not going to make a difference, so I won't worry about that too much. As you can see, FSR has come back on now, and we're locked back at 50. So, there you go, guys. Valve did it, they brought out the pair game configurations, works great, and yeah, saves you a lot of headache when changing between games. So, so I've been asked a few times on how to set up MU deck on the Steam Deck, and I'm not personally going to make a video on it, I'm going to link you to a guy's channel called Steel Lodge, he's done a great video on how to set it up, and it's all you really need to know, talks through it really well, and yeah, you'll get it set up via his channel, so yeah, I hope that helps, I'll speak to you guys soon.